There we go. Okay, you guys, over 50 of us on here. This is awesome. So welcome to our Tuesday night calls. If you're brand new, welcome. We do these every single Tuesday night and they are meant for any coach on all of our teams. About a year ago, a lot of the leaders on our team kind of had a talk and were like, you know, what can we do to have at least one place where we can all meet per week and every coach feels welcome? It's not your team call and your team call and your like, what if, what if a coach doesn't have an active coach? Like we wanted one place for everybody to feel welcome and included and that they could come and learn to build a beautiful business. We decided Tuesday nights are that, and we've been going strong ever since. Over the first 30 minutes, it's for any coach, whether you're brand new or seven years old. And then the second 30 minutes, um, the diamond and above coaches, we have our own little private call. So if you have a goal of being diamond, you work for it, join our diamond um, collective group in April, that diamond kind of push group, and you can join those calls, but welcome every Tuesday night. So these calls along with the team calls and along with the national wake up call is how I grew my business for at least the first I still, I still grow it this way. I still listen to the national wake up call every Monday team call Tuesday. And those two things alone, even if I did nothing else other than those two things in my tracker, you can grow a beautiful business. So prioritize those two things. And I mean, I I'm proof. So many coaches on here are proof. Those two things are phenomenal. So if you don't know who I am, my name's Morgan Rieger. I've been coaching for eight years at the end of July um, I'm probably all of yours upline, upline, upline. And then my coach, her name is Lindsay Matway. So she's down in Florida. Um, I didn't know any coaches when I signed up. So I kind of just signed up with a random coach. It all worked out really good. And this little girl from Saskatchewan, Canada has thankfully joined forces with all of you. So before we dive into the call, I honestly just wanted to say thank you. I don't think we often give ourselves enough credit. Um, we pop on here, we're thinking, okay, what can I learn to do better? And just take a second to be like, gosh, darn it. Like I took the leap of faith to sign up to be a coach. I'm on this call on Tuesday night. Like I'm, I'm doing damn good. I'm doing just fine, right? I'm here. I'm here. I'm willing to learn. And that's what coaching is all about. You should have seen my social media when I started. In fact, don't go look at it because it's real bad. Um, I sent Virginia, one of my very first coaches, a three page document to explain what a challenge group was. So you do not need to know what you're doing. Okay. I'm proof. But if you're here and you're willing to learn, you're going to make a phenomenal coach and build a beautiful business. So Tonight, what I wanted to cover is something a little bit different. I seen a live video in Success Clubbers by this lady called Carol Ham. She got announced as a brand new diamond coach. And as we do with all new diamond coaches, we asked them to make a live video in Success Clubbers, sharing their top tips on how they achieved this. I watched her video and I was like, this is my person. She's not my coach, you guys. She's like, she's like, there's like six or seven coaches between us. But I'm like, I love her. She has four children, two sets of twins. She built her business. She's new, a newer coach, built her business to diamond. The way she presented herself, I'm like, A, she's a phenomenal speaker. B, she's so solution focused, like not excuse focused. She's like, yeah, I just do this and this. And I'm like, I want to talk to her. I want to interview her and I want to ask her, okay, here's the tracker. Cause I know she uses it. How do you do all these things in a day? Because I don't know about you guys. Sometimes, you know, we have team calls that are about mindset or that are about anything. And those things are great. But what it comes down to is tell me what to do each day and I'll go do it. And I'll do it for the next three years. And it's going to, trust me, it pays off. So I am going to interview her. We're going to bring up the tracker. And I just want to ask her about literally every section. How do you do it? So that when you guys get off this call 
and you go to work tonight or tomorrow, you're like, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to pull up this tracker, check, 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 check. Boom, done for the day. Go live life. I'll come do it again tomorrow. Right? So that's how simple this business really is. So Carol, first, before we flip the screen and do the tracker, do you want to just share a little bit about you and how you even got started with all of this? Sure. Well, thank you so much. That's kind of a very welcoming uh, from you. So thank you. Um, so yeah, like Morgan said, I'm Carol. I have four kids. They are 12 and three. So the life, life is a little busy in this house. Um, I just kind of fell into Beachbody after having my second set of twins needing to get back in shape. I am actually a Pilates instructor before having my second set of twins, um, but I couldn't get back to the studio. There's just no way I could do it. So I had a girlfriend who was doing Beachbody and she introduced me to it. And I just fell in love with the simplicity of the programs and the effectiveness of the workouts. So for me to be able to get these type of results in a studio would take a client numerous hours and a way more money <laughs> than these programs are costing. So I knew this was my solution to be able to work with clients again in the comfort of my home, having kids and on my own schedule. So my person who introduced me actually is more of a hobby coach. She doesn't really work the business 100%. Um, so until I actually found who my upline was and got into all the groups, I kind of just invited everybody. <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. <laughs> that's awesome. And I love that because sometimes people think they have to sign up with a certain coach to be successful. And I'm just like, no, that's not true whatsoever, especially right now when there's oodles of training. It's like, you can have zero upline and do very, very well at this. So, okay, girl, I'm going to flip my screen and where's my office? Okay. So if some of you don't know, everybody can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Super. So if some of you don't know, you have probably seen, oh my gosh, it's going to pop up on me. You've probably seen our tracker that looks like this, right? It's a PDF. You can print it off. This is all we had, which was awesome. If you're pen and paper, stick with it. Okay. What I've personally been loving, if you go to your online office on your phone, laptop, iPad, whatever technological device you are using, and you go to grow my business, if my internet goes, and then you go to daily activity tracker. Beachbody just came out with an online tracker and I, myself and Carol and so many coaches are obsessed with it. So if you go to your dashboard and don't judge my filling out right now, okay? I just didn't track this week, don't judge, okay? Um, <laughs> so right here, you've got a dashboard kind of with your success club, all that, make sure you're, you're qualified, that stuff. But then when you go into these sections, it literally says exactly what you need to do in a day. So when I sit down, I pull this up. Usually I can come in here. I've already worked out, already drank my Shakeology, already done, done personal development. So literally when I sit down to work, I complete the middle two sections and, and I'm sometimes done some of these and then I'm done for the day. I move, I go live life and then I come back the next day and I do it all again. So, and consistency with this, I love how it says percentages, you do this every day, like I said, for a couple of years, you're going to be blown away. So Carol, let's just dive in first. Let's, let's just go right over to personal development. Okay. Let's go to this section. When do you do your personal development? Um, so a lot of you might get a little freaked out by this, but I do start my day between four and four 30 in the morning. Um, and that's when I do my personal development. I get up, I have my water and coffee. I get my energized ready and I do my affirmations, journaling. I read a book. I do some scripture reading. Um, I do all of it first thing in the morning. It's how I start my day. It's what gets me in the mindset. It what gives me the, just the direction of how I want to start my day. It was when I started just focusing on me and my own mental state. So very early in the morning is when I do my personal development. How long do you usually spend doing that? 
So normally by the time I'm doing personal development, it's around 4.30. So, and I usually do a full hour to an hour and a half. I was introduced to personal development because of Beachbody and it changed my world in so many ways that it's, it's just incredible. If you would have known me before, I was, I was a little bit of a negative Nelly. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, so I know how much and how important personal development is to me and my, my entire life and my, my family. So for me, I do like close to an hour to an hour and a half every day of mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So then proof of the products. I know you kind of move into a workout after that. So when do you fit in your workout and your Shakeology or other whatever supplements you use? So I always do like, like, I mean, I think everybody does. We do our little energized um, picture and then I do my workout at usually about 6 a.m. Um, which finishes around 6.30, quarter to seven, depending on, of course, what workout I'm doing. And then I actually, that's usually when I would post my workout clip and then I'm done. Then I'm on to kid duty, like getting kids ready for school, lunches, the whole nine yards. And then my Shakeology actually doesn't ever come until around two o'clock in the afternoon. So that's when I have my shake. Um, and that's when I would post. And I usually do like um, my drinking and driving, not, not with my Shakeology <laughs> because that, <laughs> that sounded bad, but with my Shakeology, because that's when I drink. My Shakeology is when I'm driving to pick up the kids from school. I crave sugar. Like there's no tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon every day. It's like clockwork. So if I don't have my Shakeology, I'm usually eating chocolate. So <laughs> at two o'clock is when I do my, my shake. Welcome to the club. You're talking to a fellow sugar addict. <laughs> Thank you to be mindset and ultimate portion fix for helping tone that down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So the outside sections of the tracker, you guys we're done, right? So let's move on. Let's go to get people results. So when do you contribute to your challenge group? So usually after I do my workout is when I would post in my challenge group. And then I would go and comment on everybody who's already done their workout. So a lot of my girls do workouts first thing in the morning, like myself. So it's pretty easy to do it then. And then I'll always back, um, go back at the end of the day. So right before I go to bed or before I put my phone down for the evening, I'll just do one final uh, challenge group check-in and I'll comment and post on everybody who's worked out since I was last in that group. So mm -hmm. I usually do twice a day. Awesome. So for recognizing achievement, I mean, you kind of do that already. Like you just said, like, is there anything else you do too, or that's kind of your, what you do? No, I think that's pretty much, unless of course I have like a, if a coach is a rank advancing or anything like that, of course, I'll do more of a recognition there. But other than that, it's just throughout the day. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Following up with new Shakeology users, how do you do that? So new ones, I usually actually have a, I put a reminder in my phone when they order and then I do it one month and then I minus about five days so that I get a notification on my phone that five days before their Shakeology order is going to be renewed, it will remind me and then I can get a hold of them and make sure that they've received their email from Beachbody. Do they like their flavors? Do they want to pause? Do they want to change their flavors? All that fun stuff. So I usually always have a reminder in my phone or you can use the back office, of course, as you get bigger and you grow your business more, your, your phone's going to be blowing up if you do it this way, which I'm finding now. So I am, what I've started transitioning to is every Thursday, I just go into my back office when, the, when our week kind of starts over and I'll pull up the subscriptions for Shakeology only. You can print those out. You can put them into um, an Excel and print it out and then just kind of check them off as you go through and check in with everybody. Cool. Awesome. And do you share, should you share like coaching with them too, or what do you usually ask them? Well, normally I've al already talked to newer Shakeology users, um, like probably well in Canada, our shipping is really, really slow. So I usually wait for about a week and a half to make sure they've gotten their Shakeology and I'll check in with them and go through um, any ideas on how to make it for them, recipes to do and all of that, this would just be a follow-up before their next shipment would go out. So I always followed up with new Shakeology users twice. Sorry, my dogs just came running down the stairs. Once um, when they get their shipment and then again before their second shipment goes. Like again, because Canada, ours are so slow, a lot of my customers prefer to delay 
a couple of weeks because they've just gotten their Shakeology and they don't want the next one shipped out. So I always want to make sure that they're aware of that. Cool. Gotcha. And you didn't hear this from me, Canadians, but you'll probably hear soon. We're getting a warehouse in Canada. So shipping is about to be so fast. So again, you didn't hear from me. <laughs> okay. When do you respond to your messages from customers, coaches, people you're talking to, your DMs and stuff? When do you respond to those? So customers and coaches that are already in my, in my group, I actually respond to them usually right away. I usually get back to those people right away. Usually customers are having a question about what I normally find is like they can't find a program or they're not sure what to do with food. So it's not something I like to leave them hanging for too long. And same thing with coaches. Usually it's a question that is somewhat, you know, they need an answer to. If it's somebody I'm responding to in regards to um, joining, I usually try and schedule those times out because they require a little bit more um, thought and answering and getting a little bit more information from the customers. So depends on that. On that. Yeah, totally. Okay. Let's go into kind of like the biz, uh, uh, the strong, the main business chunk. All right. So what do you do? Okay. First of all, I guess maybe cover, um, um, we'll talk about that. I was going to say the power hours. Cause I know those are a big thing. We'll talk about those after we go through the checklist. How do you initiate connections and expand your network? So recently, um, well, normally when I'm doing all of this, I am still, I'm in a power hour. This is, would be part of my power hour. But what I've been noticing for myself is I've had some posts that um, in my world, I call it going viral in my, in my world. Um, and I'm actually going back to those posts and I'm expanding and connecting just based off of those. So some of them have like five to 800 likes. And to me, that isn't, that's a viral post in my world. <laughs> and so going to those people who've liked that post, um, obviously they have something familiar in common with me. So I'm going and, and connecting and commenting and liking in all of that off of those particular posts. So right now I've found my best traction is working off of the likes that I get off of my posts. Okay. Awesome. I love that. Um, is that how you expanded initially or when you were a brand new coach, um, were you kind of more so connecting with people in your circle already or like, was it total randoms right from the start? So Facebook, I would go off of friends lists to expand on Facebook. And then Instagram, I did like finding hashtags to expand my network or going to, um, stores, clothing stores, um, mom groups, everything, those places to find, um, my people that way. What I found for myself was that you have to decide which platform you want to go hundred percent on. And the other one is kind of going to take, I don't want to say like the side, but it is, you have to really pick one or the other. So I've found that I've been putting more effort into um, Instagram and getting great traction. But lately I will say I've started to track where I'm getting my customers from. And a lot of my customers are actually coming from Facebook. So I do suggest now that I've started doing it is when you get a customer, just have your own little sheet of paper on the side and be like, you know, Betsy Sue came from Facebook, you know, Sally came from Instagram, and then you can see where you're getting your people from. So you know where to put more attention to because Instagram is quite a bit different in my world, or at least for me than Facebook. So you have to know how to do both. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. I highly agree with that because I find a lot of new coaches do find some of the, their most success on Facebook if if they've utilized it. But I know a great way I grew in the beginning and I, I still sometimes grow this way um, because if you just find a random on Instagram, they're probably not going to join your challenge group this month. You've just met, right? So I mean, kind of like you said, through friends list, what I often did, and this is actually how I found Virginia um, on Facebook, I went into my friends list and I picked out a girlfriend that kind of, we, we just, we get along really good. So I clicked on her name. I went into her friends list and I friend requested a couple people that looked like they were my jam. And Virginia was one of those people. She knew of me kind of, so she accepted my friend request. 
And you can actually do that on Instagram. You can go to a, a friend of yours that's kind of in your circle. You can go to their followers or who they're following and you can pick out a few people that way. Chances are you're going to have a lot more success um, finding people who want to join you that way because they know of you. A complete stranger might join a year from now because they need to build some trust in you, right? They're not just, but people who kind of know of you and you invite them, our chances are much, much higher. And that's usually how you find your first few customers. And that's how most people do achieve success starter. Okay. What or how do you invite people to join a bod group or learn about coaching? What do you, how do you invite? Just like, well, normally um, we've already had some form of conversation, whether it's like um, through a post that I've done out or something like that. And mine are just pretty simple. I actually got this off of, I think it was actually AMQ who said it, was that it's instead of trying to um, get too in depth with it, I've just been straight up and asked them like, you know, I see you liking my stories. I see you watching me, you know, do you want to join my group? Are you interested in fitness and wellness? Like, is this something you think you'd like to join? And just being straight up and like, like if they're watching, they know what you do. Yeah. Like, you know, unless you're literally cold messaging somebody, most of the time they come back and they're like, yeah, I, I love watching your videos. It's been a lot of fun getting to know you through your stories. Not right now. Thanks. Or yeah, I'd love more information. And then it's pretty easy because they've normally already been seeing. So it's just, yeah, being straight up and just, you want to join? <laughs> I agree. I think that's, I, I think in the past, it was like all about like long get conversations. And it's just like, people know who you are from your stories and they know you're a good person. So asking is like the easiest way. Who were your first few customers and first few coaches? Were they people you like acquainted with somewhat? Yes. Yeah, so my first, uh, first coaches were friends that I knew and I just invited um, before I really knew how the whole business worked. And then from there, I started growing um, through friends lists and other friends that I've, that I've, that we've gotten to know better through Facebook or Instagram. Okay. Awesome. Friends, just friends. Yeah. Awesome. And I love hearing that too, because sometimes people do sign up and they're like, nobody wants to join me. I'm like, well, did you go through your friends list and ask those people? They're like, no, I'm just like, it's just kind of randoms on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work <laughs> too well right off the start. Um, that's down the road. Okay. So how do you follow up? Honestly, it's just pretty much the same as my invites. You know, I usually give them two or three days and then I just follow up and be like, you know, did you want some more information? Do you have any questions? I usually check to see if they're still watching my stories or if they've commented or liked a post between the, the, the communications because, you know, sometimes their life gets busy. And my best follow-up that I love is just actually acknowledging that life is busy and I totally get it if, you're, if it's too much right now but I just wanted to check back in and make sure, you know, I didn't forget about you. And I find that when I don't want to say when I give people an excuse out or a way out, um, it's easier for them to come back, but it is true. When you, when you let somebody know that you understand that life is busy and like, don't worry, there's no pressure. I find that I have a better reset. I, they, re they come back to me more receptive into getting to know more information or, wanting to know how much this actually, how much work it takes or how much they actually need to invest if you're talking about coaching or if just as a customer, a lot, sometimes I find that people um, feel overwhelmed thinking that this accountability group, they have to be in it and be there and present. So when I let them know, like I get life is busy, they seem to be a little bit more um, open to getting more information because they know that I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. 100%. I completely agree. I've kind of changed how I follow up with people that way too, to just be a little like more relaxed. And like you said, honestly, I think like literally people come back, some people don't get back to me, but like a good 50% are like, oh shoot, I read your message and forgot to respond, right? How many of us do that? Um, or even on my poll, on my polls, if I'm doing a poll and asking somebody something and I you know, if they want more information or whatever, the first message I send out isn't like, Hey, 
you wanted more information, here it is, blah, blah, blah. Like the first thing I send out is like, hey, Carol, I seen you selected my poll about my online gym the other day. I know some people hit it by accident. So I just wanted to make sure you meant to select it. Because like you said, it's an easy response. They can say yes or no. And at least the conversation started. It's not just me being like, here's all the info. Don't even know for sure if you wanted it. Um, it's intimidating for them to get back to you. Okay, so you kind of covered this, but doing a social media post. So you, when do you do that again? So I um, follow my insights as much as I possibly can. So majority of my people are on usually between 10 to two. So I usually have my post prepared for the, the, the night before for the following day. So then I just have to get my hashtags. And, but again, if I'm on a power hour, I always try to post before my power hour. So if I know I'm gonna get on a power hour at 8 a.m. or at 10 a.m., I always try and post right before I get on that power hour because you wanna stay active in your app. You don't wanna post and ghost. So if I know I'm, I have a power hour, which we've got all these amazing schedules of power hours that Team Beach Bodies put out as well as the Leadership Lounge, um, if I know ahead of time, I have those scheduled in my Rise Up Planner. And so I post before the power hours. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Updating Instagram, your stories on Facebook or Instagram. Do you just, you kind of do that throughout the day? Yeah. Yeah. With the kids and everything going on, I mean, it's pretty easy to quickly throw up. I find that I have a lot more people viewing my stories when I have the kids, like in between business. And then I have more people watch like the business stories um, for longer. If there's like kids stuff or life um, put in between it because it keeps their attention and it grabs them again. So you have like two or three slides of like, maybe you're talking about your next challenge group or your fitness or whatever you're doing and then throw in something to do with your life and break it up so that they are like, oh, what was that? And they kind of have to scroll back and then they, you catch their attention again and throw in something about, you know, whatever your, your meal plan is or whatever your group is doing. And then you throw in some more of your life and it just kind of catches their attention. And I find that people stay on my stories longer when I do that. If I just do like five minutes about coaching and the coaching opportunity, then I find that I lose people. You can see the people fall off as the slides go. Mm -hmm. Totally. And you're so being a coach is just that small piece of you, right? You're so much more than that. Um, okay. Res our final one, respond to all new likes, comments, or views. So for that, um, everything and on any of the training I've done, I've got, I've heard for likes and comments. Um, I, so likes are kind of, like I said, I'll go back the next day and go through the likes and I'll try and connect with those people. But as for comments, um, what I've, found works for me is that if somebody comments, as long as I can get back to them and comment back in my post immediately or within like 15 to 20 minutes, my post seems to get better traction and stay active in the algorithm. So I know like Instagram's algorithm, the more you comment and like, the more it keeps getting bumped up into the world. So one of the trainings I heard said that if you can continue to comment in your post as fast as you can in, I mean, in reality or in reason, um, Instagram will keep boosting your posts out to more people. So some of my posts, like I might actually have like 30 comments, but it's me and the same two people, but there's like a hundred likes because the, the uh, algorithm doesn't realize that it's the same two people are talking to. They just think there's all these, com these comments going on. And so it, it pumps it out to more people. So it's better for your engagement. Awesome. Okay, boom, we're done working for the day. Go live life. <laughs> That's it, you guys. And then you come back and you do the tracker all over again. Um, so what I quickly wanted to show too is if there's ever a section on here that you're like, hmm, I'm not really sure how to do that. What I love about this tracker is you just go to this training and support tab and it's gonna break it into the four sections and there's additional lessons right here, how to follow up effectively, et cetera, et cetera. Just as some extra lessons if you want, if you're kind of stuck on one area. And then I know Carol mentioned power hours. If you don't know what they, those are, 
they're actually one hour, you don't have to be on for the full hour, but they're one hour work session. So basically we just get on Zoom like this and we do our work together. It's kind of just a way to see other faces and be like, we're all doing our own work, but we're connected at the same time. Like it just feels good. Um, sometimes we're all doing our own thing. Sometimes the leader, cause there's always a leader who leads the power hour. Sometimes they're telling you what to do, right? They'll be like, Hey, for 10 minutes, we're doing invites. Here's an example, et cetera, et cetera. So I know Carol had told me in the past before she was in these team pages, she would just go to YouTube and literally type in each body power hour and they'd pop up and she'd, she'd do one. And it's amazing. Like, I think whoever does power hours can raise their hand and say, it's amazing what you can get done in a power hour. You're like, whoa, I just did like the whole tracker in no time. Um, if you're looking for other power hours, I just wanted to show you where to find them. So if you're in success clubbers marked as an announcement right at the top, um, it's right, um, right here. It's called the level up power hour schedule. This was for quarter one. So for January, February, March, quarter two is April, May, June. So I'm going to, so AMQ actually posted, um, that new schedule. And as soon as quarter two opens up, which let me just scroll down, I'll show you guys what it looks like. It's right here. As so, as soon as quarter two comes, I'll pin this as an announcement to the top of the group so you guys can see it so More, we actually started that today uh, oh yesterday awesome okay so this is the new schedule you do not have to get on all of these you guys just when you're planning the week look at it and be like okay do any of these work with my work time and i know carol and me have talked before she's like this is how i plan my week i look at the i look at the power hour schedule and i'm like okay and you said you're like this is kid cartoon and snack time. So I'm gonna give them their cartoon and their snack and I'm gonna power hour. Um, so that's how she schedules for weeks. So if you want, you can check this out. The Zoom ID and password is just in this square right here. I didn't see this. So I was like, AMQ, where's the link and password? And they're like, more, it's right there. Um, so that's a schedule. And there are a few, if you, if you can't join live, I'm going to show you another place where you can get um, some recorded ones. So if you go to the files of success clubbers and you click on live power hours, again, these are similar to just going on um, YouTube, but these are live power hours done by some of the top coaches in the network too. So if you're looking for ones to follow along, these are all led ones. So they'll tell you exactly what to do. So there's some more examples right there. So again, if you're ever somebody that's like, mm, I don't really know what to do each day, you can obviously what Carol just went through on the tracker, but you can always pop on one of these videos and do your work with that. And again, Carol said this when me and her talked too. she's like, it's so nice because each one you learn a different way to do something, right? Like, okay, this person expands their network this way. Well, that's cool. I've never heard of that before. Maybe I'll try that. Um, so, you know, you can always be evolving. There's no right or wrong way to do anything, which I think is the best part about this business, right? There's no, no right or wrong way. So I'm going to just stop sharing my screen here. So Carol, let's wrap up. How has your life changed since starting Beach are coming into this beach body world through your own journey, but coaching, like, how has it changed you? Oh, wow, that's like a <laughs> that's <Sorry>. a <laughs> um, how has it not changed me is more like truly the, the, the thing. I, I mean, really, honestly, it's changed my entire world, my entire mental state, the way I handle my kids, the way I live my life, trying to look for gratitude over the negativity, finding positive, just connecting with amazing humans that I never would have ever met. I mean, um, it's incredible. It's just, if, if you even just use this as a platform to grow your own self personally and just you'll see so much growth in yourself. You'll want to build the business because you'll be like, how can I not share this with everybody? 
And that's kind of how I found, when I found how much I was growing as an individual, I was like, how do you not want to just keep sharing this with other people? Because you want people to be happy and healthy and live life full yeah. of energy. <laughs> hey, what's your Instagram again? Carol J. Ham, is it? I'm just going to put it in the chat for people. And then just to keep it real, because I know you're working in a basement with a sheet hanging up. Can you <laughs> show everybody your setup right now, please? Okay, y'all. So <laughs> just as a reminder, you don't need anything fancy. You can be in an unfinished basement with a white sheet hung up and you can rock this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. My basement's unfinished. There's toys everywhere. Usually the kids are running around. It's, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, we're a little over time, but that is fine. Just want to say thank you, Carol. Thank you, everybody. I hope that was super simple, but super helpful. So next week on the team call, we're actually going to be talking about the new Shanti program coming out. Let's get up. Um, so we'll see you on the team call next week. Diamond and above coaches will hop off this call and we'll hop on our diamond call. So see you later, you guys.